Welcome y'all to the Sussex Squadron channel. Today, we're unpacking the buzz around Prince Harry and Meghan's recent royal-like tour of Nigeria. This visit was not just any ordinary tour, it was a blend of charitable engagements and personal connections. The Duke played sitting volleyball with disabled Nigerian army veterans, showcasing a different side of royal engagements. Meanwhile, the Duchess co-hosted a women's leadership event, tapping into her Nigerian ancestry. This unique approach not only brought them closer to the local communities, but also set a new standard for what royal tours could look like. Now, let's dive into why this tour has been stirring up quite the buzz. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex recently wrapped up an electrifying three-day tour in Nigeria. Amid the vibrant landscapes and rich cultures of Nigeria, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle delved into activities that not only showcased their compassion, but also highlighted their unique approach to royal engagements. Prince Harry, who has long been an advocate for veterans, participated in a sitting volleyball game with disabled Nigerian army veterans. This wasn't just about sports. It was a poignant moment of solidarity and support for those who have served their country. The camaraderie and mutual respect were palpable, resonating deeply with both the participants and the onlookers. Meanwhile, Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, co-hosted a women's leadership event that became more than just a seminar. By referencing her own Nigerian ancestry, Meghan forged a personal connection with her audience, bridging the gap between her royal persona and her personal heritage. This move was not just about leadership, it was a powerful statement of identity and belonging, which struck a chord with many attendees. Throughout their stay, Harry and Meghan's interactions were marked by genuine warmth and engagement. Whether it was sharing stories, laughter or insights, each moment seemed to be carefully chosen to deepen their connection with the Nigerian people. Their approach was distinctively personal, setting their engagements apart from more traditional royal visits. The impact of their visit was multifaceted. On one hand, it provided tangible support and visibility to important local causes. On the other, it allowed the Sussexes to redefine what it means to be a modern royal on the global stage. They moved beyond the formalities and protocols typically associated with royal tours, engaging with communities on a heartfelt human level. Their approach not only touched hearts but also broke the traditional royal mold. While the Sussexes celebrated connections, other royal tours haven't fared as well. Taking a step back, let's compare the Nigerian tour to other recent royal engagements, such as the 2022 Caribbean tour undertaken by Prince William and Kate, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. This tour, intended to strengthen ties within the Commonwealth, unfortunately, stumbled into a series of controversies. First, let's talk about the optics and outcomes of these tours. The Caribbean tour was marked by protests and a less than warm reception in several nations. Critics pointed out that the tour echoed outdated colonial overtones, which did not sit well with the Caribbean public, who voiced their discontent loudly. This was in stark contrast to the warmth and acceptance Harry and Meghan received in Nigeria, where the couple's efforts to connect on a genuinely personal level were evident and well received. Furthermore, the approach to engaging with the local communities was notably different. While the Sussexes focused on grassroots initiatives and personal interactions, such as playing volleyball with disabled veterans and hosting women's leadership events, the Caribbean tour often felt staged and somewhat disconnected from the local populace. The engagements lacked the personal touch that might have fostered deeper connections and understanding. The aftermath of these tours also tells a tale of two different receptions. The Caribbean tour faced ongoing criticism, becoming a case study in what some might consider a diplomatic misstep. It highlighted the delicate balance required when conducting tours that are respectful and mindful of historical contexts and current sentiments. On the other hand, the Sussexes' tour was praised for its inclusivity and the genuine interest they showed in the issues facing the communities they visited. This stark contrast highlights a shift in how royal duties are perceived and executed. Where traditional tours might focus on formality and maintaining a certain distance, the Sussexes' approach in Nigeria showcased a more modern, relatable form of diplomacy, emphasizing connection and mutual respect. 
This evolution in royal engagements reflects a broader change in societal expectations and the need for institutions to adapt to a more aware and connected world. The media and public reactions to the Sussex's tour have been a mixed bag of admiration and criticism. In Nigeria, the coverage was overwhelmingly positive. Local newspapers and television channels celebrated the couple's engagements with the community, particularly noting the warmth and genuine interest Harry and Meghan showed. The Nigerian press highlighted Meghan's connection to her ancestral roots and the couple's active participation in charitable activities, like the sitting volleyball match with disabled veterans, a moment that resonated deeply with many. Social media platforms buzzed with photos and videos from the tour, with many Nigerians expressing pride and joy at hosting the Duke and Duchess. The hashtag hash Sussex in Nigeria trended for days, filled with positive remarks and commendations for their approachability and down-to-earth demeanor. Conversely, back in Britain, the narrative was somewhat different. Some British media outlets were less than favorable in their coverage, casting the tour as an unnecessary mimicry of traditional royal duties. Critics argued that by conducting a tour so reminiscent of a royal visit, despite having stepped back from official royal duties, the Sussexes were blurring lines in confusing ways. Opinion pieces and editorials questioned the implications of their actions for the monarchy, with some commentators suggesting that this could set a precedent for a new, uncharted form of royalty that operates outside the established norms. The criticism often seemed to stem from a place of discomfort with the Sussex's newfound freedom and their ability to capture public attention, possibly overshadowing other members of the royal family. The narrative from these quarters often hinted at a sense of betrayal or competition, suggesting that Harry and Meghan were crafting a parallel royal identity that challenges the status quo. This dichotomy in perception underscores a broader debate about the role of modern royalty and the evolving expectations of public figures in today's globalized world. The Sussexes tour not only brought to light their popularity and the impact of their philanthropic efforts, but also sparked a conversation about the relevance and adaptability of traditional royal protocols. It seems the success of the Sussexes also highlights the challenges within the traditional royal framework. Behind the scenes, royal sources express more than just a hint of unease. As Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, continue their global engagements, the ripples they create are felt far beyond the immediate splash of their visits. Their recent tour of Nigeria, while widely celebrated by the public, has drawn a curtain back on the underlying anxieties felt by traditional royal institutions. Royal insiders, often tight-lipped and guarded, have voiced concerns over the Sussex's approach, which diverges markedly from the well-trodden path of royal diplomacy. One source, deeply embedded within royal circles, lamented the logistical nightmares that such tours could potentially unleash. The lack of traditional protocols, the absence of official titles being used, and the couple's independent security arrangements pose not just a diplomatic challenge but a protocol headache as well. Moreover, the broader implications of such visits cannot be understated. These trips are not merely about goodwill, they're strategic, designed to strengthen ties and promote British interests abroad. However, the Sussex's freestyle method of engagement skips over many of these nuanced diplomatic dances, focusing instead on direct interaction and personal charisma. This has led to a sense of institutional anxiety about the potential for diplomatic faux pas that could arise from such unscripted interactions. This modern approach also underscores a deeper, more existential dread within the royal establishment. The fear isn't just about a single tour or a particular event, it's about the very evolution of monarchy in the public eye. As the Sussexes chart their own course, combining royal allure with celebrity activism, they inadvertently highlight the rigid frameworks within which traditional royals operate. This contrast is stark and, to some within the palace walls, deeply unsettling. The fear of change within the institution becomes palpable when contrasted with Harry and Meghan's modern approach. As the royal family watches from afar, the question remains.
can the institution adapt or will it remain anchored in tradition even as the world around it evolves? What does the future hold for Royal Tours and the Sussex's role in them? As the globe spins forward, the evolving narrative of Royal engagements continues to captivate and cause ripples across continents. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have carved a distinctly modern path in their approach to Royal duties, blending tradition with a fresh, proactive engagement style. This evolution raises intriguing questions about the future shape of Royal Tours. Imagine a world where Royal Tours are not just formal state visits, but dynamic platforms for advocacy and global outreach. The Sussexes have demonstrated a knack for this, connecting on a personal level with diverse communities and shedding light on pressing global issues. Their approach could potentially influence other members of the royal family to adopt a more hands-on, relatable style of diplomacy. However, this shift isn't without its complexities. Traditionalists within royal institutions might view this new paradigm with skepticism, concerned about the blurring lines between personal initiatives and official royal duties. The challenge will be to balance these innovative approaches with the established protocols that have long defined royal conduct abroad. Moreover, the Sussex's independent tours could set a trend where royal figures take more direct control over their international engagements possibly leading to a decentralized model of royal diplomacy. This would not only redefine their roles, but also potentially alter the public's expectations from royal figures, expecting them to be more involved, accessible and issue-focused. Will the Sussexes set new precedents, or will the royal institution adapt to new realities? As we look to the horizon, the answers to these questions will undoubtedly shape the future of monarchy and its place in a rapidly changing world.